I, I I got this piece of aluminum. It's just the out of the junk box art was a remnant I picked up somewhere in the past. And and the project for today is I, I need to make several of these shafts that has a cotter key hole in the end for a cotter key. I need to make several of them. So I need to make a jig to cross drill a hole in this round stock. So so what I'm going that's the project for today. I'm going to put the hole in the side and then I am going to put a drill guide matching up this way. That's the project for today. First off, uh, there there is no there's no two sides on it that are square. The, the back side is square to the face, both ways. So I'm going to use this as the reference point and this. So, and, and I ain't much on, I'm just not much on measuring. The top of my vice jaw is parallel to the head on my machine. Okay, now that's level. So I'm going to tighten it up. And you did notice that I used this point up here as on this side of the jaw. And the level one matched up to that one. Had, had this not had a point here, I would have put a round piece of stock on one side here so that it can pivot and find its own levelness. Now I am, I didn't... Uh, I didn't speed the mill up there. I was milling some cast iron earlier. Well, there wasn't no need to change no belt for this little job right here. But you can see that it's a real nice shaving. I broke that setup I had there down, and I found a piece of round stock. It's about one inch long, three eighths. It does not matter about the size. I did put it back in, and I, I repositioned the side that I just milled against the stationary jaw vise. Put that back there. I got some overhang here so I don't hit the jaw. What I want to do is just sneak up on it. Okay, I've made contact. So I'm going to come away from the material. I'm going to go back in and I'm going to lock my table in this position this way. I still need movement this way. A real nice shaver. This is a real good milling machine here. It, it has served me well, and I do recommend it to highly. It's for a home shop, I hope that you all can see that, that that is really, that is nice. The surface finish is, it's okay for what I'm doing. And this is the last cut on, on all four basics. I have positioned the aluminum block in the vise. And I have it standing on two parallels at the bottom. I do have free space. I'm center on the stock. And the material, the piece, that, what I want to work with is this 5 eighths. So, uh, and, and like I say, I, I am not concerned as to any dimension. What, uh, the only concern I have is from the bottom from the bottom of this stock to the bottom of the material I would like to have an eighth of an inch or something in that area just by eyesight I can get that now I can measure it uh, don't get me wrong I can do this right here and guess I can do the I can do the math on it but there's no need to uh, all I want to do is get it uh, see, I want a little more than that, so I just bring the table up this way, and, and I'm just eyesighting that. I can live with that right there. I'm going to lock the table at that point. There's just no need to, you know, get her done. Uh, we're going to drill the hole. You can see it's a pretty decent chip coming out. I do know that I have clearance on the other end of the material, but just get her done. We're done with that drill bit. We're going to drill the hole with just a light touch on the quill feed. If I had to do it again, I would do it the same way. So, it's not a how to do, it's just the way I do it. 
I know you're wondering how am I going to locate the hole in the top. Well, the way I'm going to do that is I am not going to move any positions. I have the table locked in, in both directions. I'm not going to move that, so all I'm going to do is untighten the vice jaw and turn it over and then drill the hole in the other side and I'll be perpendicular to this hole. Just get her done. So that's what we're going to do. Everything's right. We're going to drill the hole. The drill bushing, it's it's a it's a good fit. It's got a burr on the bottom which I'll set free with a file, but that's a decent fit. Really good. Uh, we're going to have the right clearance here all the way around. And I am using a number six drill bit. Okay, we have completed the block and I'm going to deburr the holes. I do not have a 3 sixteenths drill guide. This is a 5 sixteenths, but the outside is uniform. So I will have an order in the mail in the AM of tomorrow with a 3 sixteenths hole in it. And that will fit down in the top like so. Now at this point with this drill guide I could drill a 5 sixteenths hole through the stock but it would open up my hole in the bottom to 5 sixteenths in order to drill all the way through which would be of no consequences that would be okay. But I'm going to use this jig primarily for a 3 sixteenths hole. All thanks for this goes to Mr. Pete 222 here on the YouTube. He does, uh, he has a series of machine shop and model engine videos and by all means check out his videos. Uh, he is quite, uh, it's quite educational. He is a very good teacher. The way my drill guide works is I turned this stop on the lathe over. It's a simple turning with a stop. And this distance right here positions my raw material in the drill guide to where I want it at. So you put that in this end right here, hold it up there lightly. You put the raw material in the other end and this will, if you remove that, this will go any position that you want to drill your hole. In this case I want it to be a specific distance from the end so I put that in there, put that in there and snug up the set screw to hold the raw material in the jig. At that point I remove the stop, install, this happens to be a 5 30 seconds drill guide, install it in the top and snug it up. If you just are concerned about getting a hole through the round stock in this position, dead center, these works really really good. I have one hole done. 14 more to go. It's the drill. The drill guide works very good. I recommend this to one and all.